So I've had my Bamboo Lab X1C for about a year and a half now, and I've put a decent amount of hours on it. It's, it's obviously not my most used printer. I tend to rotate which one that happens to be, and usually it's a Voron of some flavor, uh, but I, it does see regular use. I do use it. Unfortunately, it's completely dead right now, and it's broken, and I can't use it, which is kind of a problem. So what happened? Well, remember how I did that video on how you could fix uh, a faulty sensor wire on your Bamboo Lab with a piece of tape? Yeah, that, that was a temporary fix. It only lasted a bit, and now the machine won't even home. And unfortunately, um, that means it's completely useless. A 3D printer that can't home can't print. And contrary to what some online opinions have, I actually do want to get this thing working again. Uh, the filament rollover feature of the AMS and just the ability to reliably print multicolor is the major reason I do use the Bamboo Lab X1 series of printers. So we need to get this fixed. Now, unfortunately, Bamboo Lab uses a lot of proprietary components in their printer designs, but their online store does have a decent selection of replacement parts available at a relatively reasonable price, I'll be honest. So I've gone ahead, uh, I've given Bamboo Lab my money, because my machine's out of warranty at this point, I believe, and I purchased a replacement bed cable. So we're gonna go ahead, see how easy it is to actually do user serviceability on these machines. And while we're at it for good measure, that P1P there is looking a little boring. So uh, let's go ahead and put a Panda Touch in it as well from Big Tree Tech. We've got a lot to do, so let's get started. Okay, so I've got the X1C off the shelf now. And again, for those that don't know, this machine is a very early production model of the X1C. Bamboo Lab actually did send this printer to me for testing and evaluation. And based off the issue I'm having where if you tell it to home, essentially it'll just home wherever the bed's at. I'm assuming there's something faulty with the um, sensor in the bed itself or the cable that carries that signal from the bed to the control board in the back of the printer here. So let's go ahead, we'll start taking this apart. This isn't an instructional on how to actually do this. They have full written instructions on their website. Uh, but as I go through this teardown and fixing this problem, I'm gonna comment and critique some of the things I've grown to like about Bamboo Lab machines over the past year and a half or so, and some of the things that I kind of really don't like. Um, so let's get started. And the first thing that I'm gonna point out is something that annoys me is these connectors for connecting your AMS. Uh, these have a little attachment uh, latch here that you need to depress to pull them out. And the way these are connected is the detachment latch is on the inside. So you can't easily detach them. You have to like get a screwdriver and come in from underneath and push the tab. Like why, why is it designed this way? You, you, you designed the board. Why did you make it so they really go in this way instead of this way? I don't know. And now that we got the uh, the back plate off here, um, the first big critique about the design is the fact that for an enclosed printer, it's not really enclosed that well. You have this uh, back area here where the lead screw is and, and prints and, and debris and brims are gonna make their way back here. So you're gonna have to clean it out every now and then. Uh, and also you can see the back here, it's Swiss cheese. You have the, the hole for the poop chute, the hole for the lead screw. You got these holes here for vents and fans and the hole here again for the poop chute. So it, it would have been really nice if this entire electronics part here was its own separate enclosure so that we could get better chamber chimps. Um, they have the X1E now, which includes a chamber heater, but that chamber heater is pretty much it wouldn't be needed if this machine was insulated a little bit better and sealed up a little bit better. You're I'm assuming you're getting some pretty serious heat loss through this really thin panel and also, you know, all the holes in the back. Now I did try previously fixing this error with some tape, which I guess is more of a temporary fix. Um, as we see here, it's, it's not working anymore. Uh, so if you did that, take the tape out and now we can remove the bed wire. Now, of course they did uh, glue it on with that white adhesive that they do. So it's gonna be a little bit of a pain here. So let's see if I can get that out. I really hate that they glue these in. These are locking connectors. You don't need to glue in a locking connector. The uh, manual actually calls for using a heat gun or an air dryer to uh, heat up the glue. <laughs> we'll give that a try. And this is another thing I'm not liking here. Uh, as you can see, the bed wires, they just, they're just there. You can see it's rubbing on the lead screw. There's there's grease, there's oil on it. Um, I, I really don't like this setup. There's really not a lot of room and it's constantly rubbing on this as it's moving. Now, luckily it hasn't worn through the wire or anything, but this is just, I don't like it. 
Also, this machine uses a surprising amount of self-tapping screws that go into plastic, which, you know, it's okay, it's a thing. It's just be careful whenever you're working on that. Because unfortunately, it's very easy to strip those out. And if you do, good luck fixing it. What are you caught on? There we go, okay. So that's that plastic shroud. I guess that protects all these wires here. So we gotta disconnect the bed power wires now. That one there. And where did this, where did this one go? Where does this one even go? It goes down. Where does that go? It goes into there. Where the heck does this go? Oh geez, really? Okay. Really? You, that's, that's where that screw is? Really? Down in there? <sighs> so, finally got the side plate off. So all of these screws to take off this entire side plate, just so I could undo that one screw so I can disconnect the ground for the bed so I could take the bed out. Literally, have to go through all of that just to undo one screw. The screw wasn't even tight. So we got the bed wires disconnected now, finally. Uh, so now we can actually take the bed out. <laughs> Remove the screws holding the heat bed in, okay. Nothing's easy to get out in here. It's all tight corners and not a lot of access. If you drop a screw, it tends to disappear into who knows where. You can hope you have some ball head Allen keys with long shafts to work on this machine. And now we gotta get the bed cables out. And as you can see, they go through like a really tight uh, bend in there. And you gotta like push pull to get these bed cables through. So that's power and the sensor cables go through that pretty tight hole. So uh, let's get that out. And I was wondering why earlier in the manual it called for deep pinning the bed wires and that's so the actual wires will fit through this hole they gotta go through. So you can't do it with the connector on. Hey, we finally got the bed out of this thing. Okay, now to replace that cable, that should be easy. So first off, remove the three screws and remove the ground. Just connect the ground cable. There we go. So now we got the plate with our uh, load cell sensors here, and then we have we have the wire that goes out, and that's the one we are replacing. So we got the new one here. Uh, it's a different type of sleeving on it. Hopefully, it's more durable. So now we need to loosen the glue. So loosen the glue. Disconnect the old wire and connect the new one. And do these go a specific way? I don't believe so. And now that that's replaced, we can go and put this all back together. So uh, connect this. Oh, that's where these washers are from. Try not to pull an Uncle Jesse. And now we can reinstall this bed, which means I gotta feed that cable through that little slot in the back, which, that's a really bad design. I don't like that, but it is what it is. Uh, try the tape trick, maybe. Maybe that'll help it go through easier. There we go. The sensor wire connector won't fit through if you put the bigger wire through first. That's great. You know what? We're just gonna zip tie it. Okay. There we go. Okay. Got the bed back in. Wires are through. Now we just gotta screw everything back in. Put our connector back together. And go blue on that side, brown on that side. Okay. Now we gotta plug everything back in. This goes in here. Our sensor wire goes up here. There we go. Now this ground wire kind of sneaks through all this. Reconnect the ground wire that required taking off the entire side panel when they could have, you know, grounded it on the inside so you didn't have to do that. Place this annoying cover. 
Be careful here, these screws go right into plastic and they're tiny, so it's probably really easy to strip them. So now that we got the new bed sensor cable installed finally, let's go ahead, fire the printer up quick and do a quick test home. Make sure it actually works uh, before we spend a good portion of the remainder of our life uh, putting all the millions of screws back in so I can put the panels back on. Okay, home all. And we're good. There we go, it's working again. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the panels back on and to save you the torture of that, my camera battery is about to die. So I'm just gonna do that off camera. If you're wondering how it goes back together, uh, just watch the tear down in reverse. Okay, awesome, that is good to go. The X1 is back in action, ready for printing. So let's take a quick detour and take a look at my P1P here. So recently, Big Tree Tech hooked me up with a Panda Touch. And for those that are familiar with the P1 series uh, from Bamboo Lab, one of the things that people criticize the most is the screen on it. Uh, for those that don't know, the X1 series of printers actually has a rock chick system on a chip on it, and it's actually running Linux. That's how we get this cool, fancy touchscreen. And then the A1 series also has a, apparently a pretty good touchscreen as well. But the P1 series is kind of languishing with this dot matrix ancient uh, display that's not too responsive. So, Victory Tech have this add-on here called the Panda Touch that basically gives you the full functionality of the X1 touchscreen on your P1 series. Now this works with both the P1P and the P1S printer from Bamboo Lab. Uh, really the only difference between those two machines is the P1P series came out first and then eventually they found the box in the warehouse that had all the panel frames on it and then they put those on and became the P1S series. So let's go ahead, open this up and see what we have in the box to work with. Okay, yeah, there really isn't much to this. We have a bracket, USB-C cable, four screws, Allen key, manual, and the Panda Touch itself. So let's go ahead and get this installed. Okay, so the back of this comes off, it's just magnetic. So I guess you take the back off. Uh, we attach this with some of the screws that we got. And then the mounting bracket just attaches with VHB. So give the surface a quick wipe down with some ISO or something, make sure it's clean and no grease. Peel off the backer. And then I guess you line up the right side of the bracket with the right side of the screen. So we're just gonna eyeball that. Yeah, right about there. Push that down. There we go. And then once we get the bracket on there, uh, there's a power switch on the back here. It comes set to off. We're gonna set that to DC five volt. And then we guess we just, that goes on like that. And then we have a USB cable here and this has got to connect to the USB-C port on here, so let's go ahead and do that. That I guess just plugs in here. Nope, nope, yes. And then that just plugs into USB-C port. Now there is uh, some wire management runs built into the frame. So run the wire up through that one hole in the front there and then plug it in. Make sure it's set for DC five volt and that is it. So now I guess we turn it on. Okay, so first it's gonna have us connect to the network, so I'm gonna blur all this, connect to my normal Wi-Fi. Okay, so now put your printer name, we're gonna call this P1P, because that's what I have. Printer IP, okay, we're gonna need all that. So let me go ahead and fill in all this information. Now it does ask for a bunch of information like Wi-Fi information, printer serial number, access code. You can find all that on the uh, screen here, but we've got, and installed, we got temperatures here connected. So hopefully if this works, there we go. So as far as I'm aware, this pretty much functions exactly the same as that touch screen. So that is really cool. So if you have a P1 series printer, uh, P1S or P1P, and you're looking to uh, make it just a little bit more usable because let's be honest, the screen sucks. Although I'll also be honest, I rarely use the screens on my printers. These machines have Wi-Fi connectivity. And, and while I'm not a huge fan of relying on cloud services for functionality of a something like a 3D printer, uh, you can run both of these machines in LAN mode, which is what I normally do. So if you find yourself using the screens on the P1 series enough, um, 
maybe the Panda Touch is something you may want to look into just for increasing that usability of these printers. Because let's be honest, the Bamboo machines are very newbie friendly. They're very, they, they have a lot of quality of life features to them. Um, but the screen on the P1 series, let's be honest, is a uh, not a great thing. So Picture Tech has a nice little upgrade for you if that's something you're interested in. Although I'm now realizing um, I may have set myself up here for failure because unfortunately with that Panda Touch on my P1, it's not gonna fit on my shelf anymore. So this is gonna have to move downstairs. Now, if you don't like uh, the default mounting setup with the included bracket, I've already seen there are some prints uh, available for different mounting options. You can have it beside the touch screen. And also the Panda Touch works remotely. So you could just, you know, take it off, run it through its internal battery. It's connected to your Wi-Fi, and you can actually control your printer uh, with just the pad. It'd be really great though, if you get the webcam feed on here, but unfortunately that's not a thing. So there we go, a nice little repair and upgrade video for you today. Um, TLDR, my long-term thoughts on the X1 series of printers, it's a good machine, uh, but it has a lot of little quirks of things that I, I wish I could do on it. For example, the, the one thing that this machine doesn't have that has driven me insane the most over the year and a half of me using it is the fact that it doesn't even have a console. The fact that if I have to drop the bed down to do maintenance on the printer, I have to sit here like a Neanderthal and constantly touch the screen to drop it five or 10 millimeters at a time. I just can't do G1Z250 go. You, you can't do that on machine. You, you just can't, they don't let you. Um, and also when it comes to doing repairs on it, yes, you, you can do repairs. If you need parts, Bamboo has them and they're the only ones that really have them. Uh, so hopefully they stay in business. So you can really tell while you can repair this machine, they didn't really design it with repairability in mind. Uh, a good example is the bearings in the XY joints are press fit in place. You can't replace them. If you have a bearing go on your XY gantry on your bamboo machine, you pretty much have to buy an entire replacement gantry, disassemble the entire printer just to replace that 30 cent bearing. Or if your bearing goes on your uh, linear rods on the XY, same thing. And even the rods are fused into the XY joint. So if anything goes in that gantry, you're just stripping down that entire machine and having to buy, in my case, a hundred dollar gantry replacement to potentially fix a 30 cent bearing. So yeah, it, it, it could be worse but it could be better. And I would love to see Bamboo iterate on the next revision of their enclosed Core XY machine and just make it a little bit easier to service or at least streamline servicing some of the more critical components. Cause let's be honest on my Vorons, on a Prusa, if you have a bearing that explodes, you can replace that in sometimes like 30 seconds. It's not a huge deal, but on these machines it is. And then again, for the Panda Touch, uh, if you do run P1 series of printers in like a print farm, uh, hey, this might be something you may wanna get, especially considering you could control multiple printers at the same time uh, with one of these and it's Wi-Fi, so you can walk around with it as well. So yeah, hope you enjoyed the video today. Before you head out, make sure you like that smash button while you're down there. If you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on some of the fun things we do, like all the live streams. And if you wanna help support the channel, the content I create and the things I do, consider becoming a channel member, Patreon supporter, or just checking out some of the links in the description. Affiliate links don't cost you anything extra. Go a long way in supporting the channel. I'm Nero3D, the Connect creator, and cheers.